Now, my next guest presented his vision 14 years ago to a room of 50 people at a conference in Miami. By the end of his presentation, only seven people were left in the room. But two believed in what he wanted to achieve. Peter Keeling is the founder and CEO of Diaceutics. It's a company that gathers global data from millions of patient records for pharmaceutical companies in order to improve patient outcomes. And it provides services to 20 of the 30 largest global pharma companies. Now, to explain it all, um, Peter is with me. Good morning and welcome. Good morning, Pat. Now, um, collecting data, how do you go about doing that? Uh, well... First of all, the way to look at that is what what are we trying to find the picture of? So um, I would say the pictures that we're trying to find are a, dis a picture of a disease. Let's take, for example, lung cancer. And lung cancer is a disease. Um, there are multiple sources for how that information will flow to you. Some of it will come from testing laboratories. Some of it will come from insurance companies. Some of it may come from patients themselves if the patients are searching for information. And the right way to put that information is to gather from multiple sources and interlace this information on top of each other to get a comprehensive picture, a 360 degree so, view. So it could be um, someone who has had lung cancer and who's been cured, but you need to know at what stage were they diagnosed, Absolutely. what might the cause of that cancer have been, yeah. and so on. So it's not just cancer or no cancer no no it's it's a testing journey so i i think a good a good statistic is for the majority of lung cancer patients today and i'm talking both in ireland and the united states and europe you probably have a journey that goes from cough to proper treatment of about four years there might be 10 testing events along that journey and some of those testing events as you know from ourselves or from people that we know are often very Difficult, you know, the turnaround time for testing might be too long. Uh, you have to wait a long time for the answer, etc. So we're trying to capture all of that information to get a, a real world picture of what is going on at a disease level. So for someone who's searching for information um, and you've done this big picture stuff, but you also have, because it's big data, you have the minutiae. Can you find a, a, an existing patient anonymized who might mirror the journey that this inquirer is on? Yes, I, it, it is about it is about finding population level observations. I, I I kind of think of the way the maps that we put about put together a bit like a subway map. And um, lots of patients are travelling throughout the subway, and they're stopping at various stations. But there's always a better route. There's always a better and optimal route across that subway. And what we're trying to do with the information is, first of all, to find out where are the patients gathered, where are the stations that they're stopping at, and can we point them towards a better route, towards the right treatment faster. And in lung cancer, for example, there's really no impediment for those patients taking four to five years to get to the right treatment. We, we, we should be able to do that in months, five months, six months. And the way to do that is to make sure that patients are being tested more appropriately, sending them through different stations, sending them to, to different laboratories to make sure they're getting the right test. So you, you would therefore be able to provide that subway map for a patient and say, if this is where you are, and we know where you're going, hopefully, to a successful treatment, uh, these are the stops along the way, and you can accelerate through that process rather than go to Bayswater and then change onto the Northern Line and go Absolutely. somewhere else and somewhere else. You go direct on the Circle Line and, and get that, to your destination. That's that right. And, and, you know, in five years' time, that information may and should be available to individual patients. Today, we're trying to work with other system providers so that they can intervene. Somebody has to intervene and make a change. So for a treating doctor, an oncologist who is faced with this, we're picking lung cancer, but we could pick any number of, of yeah. conditions. Does, that, does a doctor have access to this kind of information? What's the pathway for that doctor? Yeah, it's a really good point. Um, does a doctor have access to the, the level of disease level observation? Probably not, not yet. Um, they should have access to it and we can make that available to them. But remember, most practicing oncologists are hugely busy 
literally just dealing with patients and with the current way in which the treatment guidelines are suggesting they should treat with these patients. What I think we're trying to do with this data is to come along and say, here is a better way in which if you test this patient earlier, or if you test them with a different set of tests, you will make more informed decisions. So oncologists should and will be on board with that information, but someone has to bring that forward to them. So does that come via... Uh, a pharma company is that the way they, they see your data and they say my goodness chemical x or molecule y has been very effective for this particular kind of thing and um, it's good business for us to get the word out there it, 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 it does in in i think the business idea behind diastatics is that we, we've looked across the if you like the ecosystem of industry and said who has the greatest opportunity to make a change here and we believe the pharmaceutical industry has the greatest opportunity they're the ones with the pockets that can bring forward better education that can bring forward a better way of which we look at this data informing oncologists informing laboratories and ultimately informing patients so for us the pharmaceutical industry is a conduit for this change um, it's a journey. We're on that journey. It'll take a long time to do it. But, uh, you know, there's been roughly a couple of hundred therapies now uh, approved by the FDA and here in, in Europe where we have a pretty good pairing or a companioning of better testing and better treatment. That's, that's the way forward. That is the future to make sure that the testing and treatment are, are worked in, in conjunction as opposed to these separate ecosystems or these separate silos, which is where they are at the minute. Now, if someone has a rare disease, um, is it helpful there or are you not concerned at the moment with the rare diseases because you don't build a big data bank on rare diseases? By definition, they're rare. Um, you know, I, I, that's interesting. I, I think it absolutely applies to rare diseases. Um, we're working with some childhood diseases at the moment where there might be only 100 children uh, with a particular genetic uh, disease. Yet, yet the way to find that disease is to have those patients tested at birth. Well, we do other tests at birth. Um, we do general uh, testing of children and their health, uh, overall health. Introducing a new test at that point is a way to find those rare diseases. Those tests may not be expensive, but by bringing them forward and introducing them to a new protocol, you absolutely change the opportunity for parents and physicians to find and identify those diseases earlier. So your germ of an idea, which 50 people were listening to, 43 fell away, and two were fascinated. <laughs> uh, where did that come from? Uh, I, that, I think that was born of, you know, I've, I uh, was fortunate in my career to have worked for the first half in the pharmaceutical industry where I understood the, the power of um, the pharmaceutical model to help educate and inform entire, uh, an entire patient uh, by introducing new treatments. Um, then the second half, I got the chance to spend a little time at MIT and look at is there a better way in which we can manage patients? And the idea w was born of it's better to find and treat patients early than to uh, kind of treat them late in their journey. There's a better economic uh, model, there's a better treatment model as a result of that. But trying to convince people of intervening in that, somebody has to take responsibility for that. So the idea was to put together a, a, a financial model which spoke to the pharmaceutical industry and said, by becoming more involved in the, in the testing as well as just the treatment, um, engineering these together will have a better economic outcome for you in the pharmaceutical industry as well as, well as a better healthcare outcome for us in society. Was it a hard sell? It, it, it was a hard sell. Uh, 13 years ago, I think people looked, you know, the, the two people in the room that, that approached uh, were, I think the one comment was, we're thinking about this. Um, and I, I think it, 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 at the time it felt as if I was either crazy or mad or uh, an apostle. Um, but you know what has happened in the, in the 13 years? I think there's been an awakening throughout the pharmaceutical industry and awakening by the medical community that actually I mean, this is a good idea. I suppose, uh, you know, big data has become a very powerful tool in all sorts of areas outside medicine. So it's an idea, you were ahead of the game, but it is big data you're dealing with. It, it is big data, and I, I think we need to do a better job 
generally a better job in the industry of explaining why this data is important. It's not just about collecting anonymized information and hosting it. It's about using that to make informed choices. If you think of the, you know, what Vicky Phelan re- re- exposed and what Gabriel Sully uh, de- described was a breakdown in, in a cancer system. And that breakdown was very much born of evidence of where patients were not being tested appropriately, where they're getting the wrong answer, they're getting the answer too late, or the sample is being shipped halfway across the planet. It's only the data will reveal that level of understanding, transpose that to every other disease, and they start to make some informed choices about how we can fix that. And how many diseases are you active in? We're 138 diseases that we're looking at at the minute. Not all of those diseases have we fully mapped. But about 30 of those diseases, we have a pretty good view of where those subways, uh, those subway stops are. Well, what a brilliant idea it, it was. And uh, Peter, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, Peter Keeling is uh, the founder and CEO of Diaceutics, uh, a company that you probably ne- have never heard of, um, but behind the scenes doing fantastic work. Thank you very much. Peter, thank you so much for joining us.